to kind of provide a town hall format for you today. We're going to take various questions from different viewers, uh, and we really want you to participate today and just kind of get involved in what we have going on today. So good news is we received some questions from other social channels in advance, and our goal today is just kind of have a fun, casual conversation about golf, business, and ping. And with that said, I'm really honored to introduce my friend, John K. Solheim, a uh, good friend of mine. John's the president of Ping Golf. John, thank you for joining us so much today. We really appreciate it. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Great. for uh, Thank you for having me on the show. It's going to be sure, fun. Sure. Yeah, no problem at all. John, if you don't mind, just tell us a little bit about Ping and what you've been up to over the last uh, several months. <laughs> well, the last several months have been uh, di definitely different than the normal for us at Ping. So, uh, Ping, you know, we're a family-owned business, uh, been in business since 1959, so over 60 years. Uh, so we've seen a lot of ups and downs over the year, never quite seen a, a downturn quite like we did with uh, COVID-19. Um, so we actually, we voluntarily closed down uh, kind of mid-March uh, and then uh, had executive orders to kind of close down for April. Um, so we, we've been closed. Uh, there are still some of us working. We're doing a lot of work from home, uh, not making golf clubs right now, though. Um, but anxiously awaiting to to get the green light and to start building some more golf clubs, and building some custom fit golf clubs for c customers out there. Really good. Well, I appreciate doing that. And just kind of another notion to you know all the viewers out there. Any questions that you may have, this is this is for you. This is for you to ask. Whether it's for second swing or related to second swing or related back to ping, feel free to ask questions that you have as a whole. John, some good news out there. I think in Minnesota, we're really happy. The sun is out. And it's shining, and and luckily last Friday the governor said we could open up golf courses. So golf was really really busy Saturday and Sunday. Uh, how how's everything going in Arizona? That, that's awesome to hear. Yeah, in Arizona, golf has been deemed an essential essential business. So actually, the plane of the game. So I live on a golf course, and I've never seen it so busy out there. It's great to see a lot of families golfing. You know, they're kind of quarantined home, and they take the foursome or even a fivesome out on the golf course around there. Uh, so golf courses have been really busy in Arizona, um, so it's exciting to see. Uh, we've had great weather. We've been kind of lucky ever since the whole COVID-19 crisis came upon us. We've had perfect 70-degree weather. So it's been good to get outside, um, kind of get out of that work-from-home routine and go and spend some time out on the golf course. Are you doing any of your uh, at-home schooling on the golf course or drive range or putting green, anything good like that? <laughs> so. Well, we got all the at-home schooling going. Actually, right now I'm worried about my Wi-Fi network because I've got three kids upstairs all doing Zoom classes. So <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, I've got the Giga Blast plan, so hopefully it works for us. Um, but there's a, one of my kids still does. They still do a little bit of golf instruction, so they're doing some one-on-one. -on -one, so he's getting out to the golf course, and then uh, had been able to take the girls out. They don't golf as much, but got a couple of this kind of family time out on the golf course. Yeah, you know, really nice. Locked it, locked down at home. Yeah, nice stuff. I'm doing the same. My four little ones, we, we've been taking them out daily, just getting them on the course, or we have a park next to us. We've been hitting balls before the course open up and just kind of getting the swings back and then grooved in. You know, many folks have been asking us how we stay connected with the golf community and what we've been doing. And for second swing, it's been obviously challenging over the last – several months with all five stores closed down. But for Second Swing, we've been doing a lot of curbside pickup. We've been doing that. We On secondswing.com, the good news for us is really all of our stores inventory is available for sale online, whether it's you know new or used or whatever it may be. And then we've taken some fitters and we've shifted them from the stores and moved them to the online world so they can now take phone fittings and, and work with customers and you know get different selections going like that as well. How about for Ping? What's going on for Ping and how you've been staying connected with customers as a whole? Yeah, so we've definitely upped our social media presence um, quite a bit. So we, we've been able to create some good content. My favorite one that we had, well, one, we had a, a video called My First Ping, and it went through several of our players. Lee Westwood was the one that got me emotional or whatever, where he's talking about his first ping clubs, and it shows all his gold putters. And it, it's just a video he did at home while he's in lockdown like everybody else. Uh, we also came out with some Zoom backgrounds, so I know everyone's doing work on whether it's Zoom or Teams or uh, Google has one, too, that my kids use. Um, so we've got some great ping backgrounds in the background. And they kind of taken from your lead because we know when you guys sell on the Internet, you've always called up and made sure they're getting fit for the right product. 
we've actually taken our fitters, our VIP fitters, and now they're doing Zoom calls with customers and fitting them into Ping products. So they go through the whole fitting, similar to what you guys do. Uh, not really closing the sale there, but just getting them ready for when, God, when they are ready to make that purchase. They know exactly what to go and get. It's pretty amazing when you do call those customers back that order maybe something stock or whatever it may be. How how many times they come out and they're six two or six three and they need green dot plus half inch. Yeah. Need to hit high fluff balls and need to strengthen the lofts or whatever. But I think we're something like seven or eight out of ten orders that we call back and that we work with that we end up changing the specs or on. So yeah, really that's good. fantastic. I also heard that uh, that there's a new blog that you're looking to introduce. Is, yeah, so um, on our website, so yeah, we're doing a lot of social media, and then we've got the proving grounds and a, and a blog on there. So that's more uh, the science behind golf. So we've we've got a lot of good. We've several of our engineers have already written articles in the past for the My Golf Spies and Golf Works. So we're posting those articles up there, but we've got great new content coming as well, uh, just on the fitting, performance, all all things uh, techno and golf. Cool. I know there's some different questions coming through, but I got one for you. This is this should be more on the fun side, but I've always wondered what was your first set of ping clubs, or maybe they even weren't first set of clubs. Maybe they weren't ping. But. <laughs> <laughs> My first set, no. So ping started in 1959, so I was born in 74. So. My, I've always played pings. I want to say the first set I remember were the ping eye irons. Um, and they were probably, I mean, might have been the eye woods as well back then. So the eye two is what came out in 1980, I think, or 82. So most of my junior golf was playing eye twos. But I do remember that first set of ping eyes. I remember my, uh, my first set. I had a Chichi Rodriguez set, kind of junior set initially. And then I went into... I started saving up some money and trying to save money for the, the, the I-2s, right? Well, then the coppers came out. And so I was working at a small at-home business doing with a, a cousin of mine. We were stuffing bags into bags and making like a nickel a bag, long story short. But anyway, <laughs> we got about halfway through the summer and we couldn't complete the project. So I had to settle on the stainless steel versus kind of upgrading all the way to the <laughs> copper. But really great set. Love that set as a whole. Yeah. Uh, just, I think, John, here's a question that came in. It's... um. It's referring to what's in your bag right now. Maybe tell us a little bit about the clubs in your bag, 400, 410. Yeah, so I am really happy with what I got in my bag. So I'll start with the wedges. I, I actually use the Glide Forge wedges. I like the little smaller head um, compared to the uh, Glide 3.0s. Um, so I still use the Glide Forge. Um, I've got I-210 irons. Really love those irons. Um, hit those irons great. I've got G410 Woods, and I'm playing right now a – actually, I do have an I-500 3-iron. So that's my little automatic Stinger 3-iron club, that I, mm -hmm. uh, very good utility club in the bag. And then I've got a 3-wood G410 and a driver uh, G410 LST. It seems like on that 210 iron for – I'm born in 74 as well, but folks with swing speeds like ours, there a lot of champions tour players have them. There's a lot of tour players that have them in their bag. A lot of yeah, LPGA yeah. players LPGA. have them. <laughs> yeah, it's just a good kind of high launch, low spin club. It's yeah, really it gives me the right amount of workability where if, you know, I do need to work a ball around a tree, I've got no fear of doing that. But I can also miss it a little bit and still count on the ball getting on the green. Yeah. Here's a question that came in from Tom. Tom asked, what is your favorite ping club of all time? Besides the I-2. I mean, the I-2 is definitely uh, makes everyone's list. But yeah, so my favorite, like uh, going back my work career wise, I would say would be the G2 driver, um, just because that was kind of the way I see it, the first driver that really put us into the kind of a market leader uh, in the driver category. And we, we saw some great market share growth. Um, we kind of, we had the tie aside driver before that, but that was right when I had started working. So I, I wasn't too involved with that, but the G2, I had a lot of involvement in and saw some you know big gains and as far as market share tour presence uh and just performance of the golf club that one always still does well for us i like the leading edge on that driver in there it's just really clean straight edge it's kind of hard to find that these days you got a lot of bulge and roll on different drivers but yeah to me the interesting thing with that one it was kind of the rare time that was our one year life cycle because I think it was only a driver we had with the G2. And then a year later, we came out with the shortest driver life cycle we've ever had with the whole G5 family that was, you know, 
driver through fairways through irons yeah really nice here's a question that came in right here from kevin i've been using my m5 iron since october and the four iron loft is 19.5 my hybrid three is 19. does the similar loft create a gapping problem haven't been a player since 04 so don't know much about golf anymore and i would just say in there it's not really related to ping or anything like that but it looks like you got a kind of a gapping issue in there and we probably want to think about uh, you know, maybe getting fit and kind of getting on track, man, and figuring out what that four iron's doing and what that 19 degree hybrid's doing. You're probably fighting each other in both those cases as a whole. Uh, kind of going into another one. There's this is one's from Colin and John. This one's for you. He has any thoughts on bringing back manufacturing at all to the United States, especially irons and woods? Uh, yeah. So we currently do what we call well assembly all in the U.S. So. It's actually been kind of interesting. We were just talking about it today, depending on because we're in the U.S., several are not. Um, so several are still able to ship because they're not in the U.S. So um, but definitely we see the trends coming back to it's more favorable to build stuff in the U.S. And we, we try to do whatever we can. Uh, we do still do a lot of putters fully done in the U.S. Are you still there, Simon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. OK. You You're yep. froze. So what we try to do, so I definitely see the trends definitely trending out of China manufacturing and more back to the U.S. Or, or other countries as well. Okay, really good. You know, kind of speaking about speaking about overseas and just international, tell us a little bit about your experience in Japan and how that can maybe shape you as a leader. Did it change, yes. you, change you? Would you be a different uh, person if you didn't do <laughs> that? I'm still the same person. Besides like uh, a sushi more, I would imagine, yeah. right? So we, the whole family, uh, so we had four kids at the time. I had ran engineering for 10 years, so I'd been the VP of engineering. And then I uh, got the assignment to go run our Ping Golf Japan is what it's called operation. We did that for three and a half years. Uh, great learning experience for me. The whole family grew the business quite a bit while I was there. So it was fun seeing success there. And, and we continue to, it's kind of like uh, the fire got started while I was there and we've continued to have year after year, huge gains in market share and uh, acceptance over there. And had, now we've got players on staff over there that have won. We had Shibuno win the uh, British uh, Women's Open last year. So just having great results in Japan. But we had a lot of fun out there. I, you mentioned the food. I, I love the food, um, not just Japanese food, just the whole quality of food over there was outstanding. Uh, they don't speak a whole lot of English there, so it was a struggle just communicating, but I guess, I guess it taught me how to like read body language a little better <laughs> kind of understand when someone's mad just by uh, just the vibe they're putting off. So, but a great learning experience. And then Bennett kind of came back from that. And then a couple years working under Doug Hawken, our, our former president, and then uh, kind of worked my way into the president role after that. So it definitely prepared me uh, for kind of, I had been an engineering guy before that and taught me, you know, a lot more about the sales side, the marketing side, into some of the operation side as well. Sounds like a great experience there. This is from Bradley. He came through another social channel. He came through Instagram and just said, will Ping do another set of raw wedges anytime in the near future? The raw wedge, so like uh, unfinished? Uh, you know, we're always looking at different finishes out there. So I wouldn't say it's not definitely in the plan right now, but as uh, different things come available, we're always, the raw one's a little tough because, you know, we really struggle with clubs that like intentionally rust or whatever, because you get consumer complaints as well as consumers love it. So it's a tough one to balance, but uh, I wouldn't say we're, we're never going to do it. I know we talked earlier about like kind of what some of the tour pros are up to and how everyone's staying connected a little bit, but what are some of the things that the tour and the staff players that you know personally are up to and like how are they staying busy? Are they playing golf? Are they practicing every day? Have they kind of relocated to a state where they can play and practice? And yes, uh, you know, they good, I haven't talked to him. Like I talked to Bubba Watson a couple times. He he kind of self quarantined him and his whole family uh, early on. So they, but I think they do get out. He he because he actually has a driving range in Pensacola, Florida. So I think they're still going out to the driving range and hitting balls and stuff out there. Um, you know, the practice wise, I've seen a lot of them on Peloton. I got a Peloton bike, so it's been fun getting in on it because they'll put out a message when they're going to be out there. But they they kill me. Those guys, you don't <laughs> think of them as great athletes, but then you see and they like win the races and stuff. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> these guys are good athletes. Yeah. 
That's pretty fun. But I think they're all practicing, you know, the, fortunately for them, they've all got nice homes and, you know, a lot of them have practice facilities at their homes, you know, not full golf courses, but indoor, you know, hitting bays and stuff like that. So they're staying loose. And I, I think they're, you know, itching to get back out on the golf course and start playing again. Very nice. I know, uh, you know, a while back you had a nice Arcos relationship and, and you know, there's a nice Arcos partnership going on. Out. Tell me a little bit about that. This came from Kathy. She's wondering how that partnership kind of came about. And um, I believe maybe it has something to do with Bubba's caddy in there. And just, just how's the Arcos process? Yeah, so, so I, well, I've lost track of the time. It was probably about two years ago or – Three years ago, I played in the uh, in a member guest with Bubba Watson, and his caddy also played with another member. And I was playing a practice round with Ted, and you know he had these things on the back of his grip, and I asked him what they were, and he said Arcos. And I was like, oh, I'd heard of them, but hadn't really looked into them. And then probably about six months later, Sal from Arcos, he the founder of it, contacted me, and he, uh, you know, so I because Ted had it, he kind of already had some credibility with me. So I said, hey, yeah, I want to, you know, he wanted to come out and play golf and show me how the whole technology works. So we set it up and I'm a big like data guy from designing golf clubs. You know, it's all about the data. What's the data showing? Um, and this really takes that data to the average golfer. It's it's to me better than what ShotLink provides for the PGA pros. So for a golfer to be able to do that and analyze their game. And so my story was. I was like stuck at a six handicap forever because I couldn't chip. And when I, when I got Arcus in play, I knew I couldn't chip, but then I really knew how bad it was. And it got me motivated that, you know what, if I could just chip like a 12 handicap, I'll be a two handicap overall. And so it, it really got me starting to work on my game. And, and then as you like looking at full shots and you see where your misses are and it can, they told me I needed to go get refit for my iron. So me of all people, wasn't weren't fit for correctly for my iron so once i got that new fitting you could just see the data and the trend go right back to the to center so i've had a great experience with that so yeah unfortunately we just launched the g710 irons which was our first product stock with arcos we've had you know the in this time to see customers uh, convert over and using it and signing up for it has been very exciting uh in japan they're a little less closed down than we are and we're actually having really good results in japan with arcos so I would say in light of the whole situation, we're very happy with where we are with Arcos and kind of like everything else, looking forward to opening up again and uh, kind of re-pushing the Arcos message that we had just started. I know the folks at Ham around here, we run their, we run their trade program um, and they, they love them. We have a lot of different customers have them here. Uh, a lot of our associates have them here and there's just good feedback, good data. And like you said, that data really helps you make better decisions. So it's been really Really nice to see that as a whole. This one yeah. came in from Lisa, and she's talking about Tanya's trick shots. So it was part of the it was part of the package here uh, when you signed up. Tanya, does she need to teach you any trick shots, or has she taught you any <laughs> trick shots at all? <laughs> you know, that's the one thing. My kid the other day, he was practicing like the, the just the bouncing the ball. And that's something I never got good at. I mean, I can do like ten, and then I'm done, or whatever. And you see all those pros, and they can really do it. And at first, I was like, why are you practicing? I'm like, you know what? Maybe it's a good thing he's practicing in that. No, so I have not gotten any trick shot lessons from her. And I know I'd be very, it's just one more thing that I'm not ready to take on. <laughs> good stuff. Here's one from Tom, and this is just about the 410 line. That 410 line, by the way, performs unbelievable in track, man. I mean, we work on track, man, all the time and the data in there. It's really, really tough to beat the driver, the fairway you know, in the irons for the right customer in there. But Tom said, I love my 410 driver. And what type of feedback are you seeing from tour players on this product and then product testing in relation to the 410 driver? Uh, so they love the 410 driver. So I'm going to say 90, 95% of all of our contract tour staff players are playing the 410 driver. Um, and then what's so exciting about it is the number of players that aren't under contract that are playing the driver. Um, I want to say like any given week, we've got 15 staff guys playing the driver, but every week we have about 30 in the driver count and those are rough numbers. So, but about double what our contract guys are, are also playing the driver for out of fee. So that just to me shows how well respected that driver is out on tour. And actually during the shutdown, there's been a few guys that aren't on staff asked for our driver to, uh, to get some testing in with it while they're, uh, 
weather at home. Really good, John. Just a couple more questions for you here. This one's more just from me, and I know like from a small business perspective, my wife Sarah and I, we try to really support small businesses and, and just work really hard to whether it's referring someone to a store or you know maybe buying a gift card or just, just shopping at the store in general. Anything that you and Brooke are doing to support small businesses out there? Yeah, well, I, the one thing uh, we had talked about, we've got like a, a yard service that still comes out every day. And they were out here actually like a half hour ago. And I'm like, those guys need to wrap it up. because I'm like, yeah, <laughs> Facebook Live. But that was one thing. I'm like, hey, we can't just cut them off, you know, because I, I don't want to send them out on the street. We're going to get through this and, you know, we can handle it. Uh, yeah, the other stuff, like we've got a lot of like boutique coffee shops that we like to go to. And uh, they usually they all still have like drive drive through service or, you know, takeaway service. So we've been doing that. some. we I would say we have eaten in more than we ever have historically. So my wife has really stepped up her cooking game and it's been outstanding. But every <laughs> once in a while, we'll, we'll treat the kids and we try to go to a local company. Uh, we actually went to El Bravo, my favorite Mexican food place. And my kids have never loved me so much when I said, hey, we're going to El Bravo. What do you want? <laughs> yeah. They all got excited. Here's a good one. Remember, that, remember this putter uh, as a whole here from Jimmy. He says, does Doc John have a favorite putter? What's Doc John's is it, favorite is that, is that Jimmy Cat? I, I know Jimmy Cat. There's <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Cat, the Jimmy Cat. What is yeah, John's so, uh, favorite putter? I would say growing up, my favorite putter was always the B63. And it was my dad liked the putter. My dad designed the putter. So it, uh, and I actually had like a hand me down putter, but I probably used that putter longer than any other putter I've used in my life. And now I look back and it's very hockey stick, like very heel shafted. I'm sure you guys have some of them in your yeah. immense inventory of used clubs. Did they ever make that putter in copper, brilliant copper? I don't, you know, my putter was actually one, it was a black oxide oxidized putter but it had, it was so old it had faded and it was more it just looked like a regular steel putter but not very dull um so i would say historically that's always been my favorite putter i've never i haven't gone back to it in 20 years but growing up that was my favorite actually right now i'm put and with an answer four putter that is probably my favorite over the last 10 years so that's going back to an old putter but i just like Kind of with the B63, I like a heel shafted putter. I tend to open and close it a little bit. And I find when I get the shaft a little towards the heel, it just fits my stroke and works better for me. Really good. Well, John, I just, you know, from a similarity standpoint between second swing and between ping, there's a couple of things I just really admire about ping that I think is really neat. Family owned business is great. Uh, that's, a, that's a great aspect of it. Customers always come first for ping. You've always done a great job of that. And the family's always done great with that as a whole. And, you know, I think just in general, it feels like Ping needs to be in business and wants to be in business just because they want to create great jobs. We try to do that here at Second Swing as well. And we've actually taken that from you. You guys have been very inspirational for us in that way. But um, anything else that really jumps out to you from a small business standpoint or just from a family-owned business standpoint uh, that you want to share with us on, like, the advantages of having a small business or the advantage <laughs> of having a family-owned business that you like a lot? Yeah, well, I... I wished our business was a little bit smaller so we'd qualify for those small business deal. loans. Yeah. Uh, the PPPs <laughs> is what everyone's called. We're, we're a little too big for that, but that would have really helped us out. So the plan, you know, we've had to go down a different path with our employees as we're closed. Um, it's similar, but it's not quite as good as what the small businesses are getting. But um, yeah, I would say that's been a huge benefit to small businesses to keep things going, but, you know, having that payroll protection and then get, getting that forgiven. So they, they're incentivated not to let go of any employees and, and keep it going. Uh, like I said, we're, a, we're above that. So, you know, we're working hard to maintain all the jobs we can, just trying to figure out how long this closure is going to last and to see what we come out like. But, you know, I would say in the meantime, like places like Second Swing with your great service, and you guys do have an online website. So if you are interested in, in golf clubs, you know, I would say you guys are, are one of the best out there as far as being able to deliver that and then following up with the customer and making sure what they actually ordered online, not just taking the easy sale, but making sure that they've got what's fit for them and what's going to work for them. So they continue to come back for you for business in the future. Yeah, really, really good. Thanks, John, for sharing that. Michael Peterson, when will your company open back up? I'll take it first and you can go next. But okay. for us, we have online is open. And for our stores or five stores, there's going to be time frames between really 
May 1 or May 4th, really all the way till probably middle of June on when, when they'll open up. It's going to vary by state and most likely Arizona will be one of the first ones for us to open. How about you, John? So, yeah, it's a little unclear to us because we, we don't exactly know. So we were basically we're closed, but we've got a lot of people working from home and a few people working in the office maintaining the buildings. But one of the big projects we've undertaken while we've been closed is how do we get social distancing in the production line? Because that was as this kind of hit. That's why we actually closed ahead of the executive order was because we were like, hey, we're not in line with the social distancing. So but we have now we've had. We're going to have about six weeks when May starts to prepare for this. So we anticipate that we'll be able to start building small quantities um, sometime in early May um, for, you know, maybe special orders that are out there and stuff. But as far as when we're full born open, we're going to have to wait for the governmental guidelines. But we think we'll be able to stay within the guidelines that are out there and kind of call it a soft opening or a small opening and have a few people coming back to work following all the guidelines that are out there for us and uh, be able to make a little bit of product, but nothing, no, no major plans yet for when the full opening comes and we're just kind of waiting for guidance. Okay. Well, John, I just want to say thank you for all you do for the golf community. Thank you for all you do for small businesses and just especially thanks for all you do for second swing. We really, really appreciate all you do for us and we're honored to have long-term partnerships with you. And uh, we, we can't thank you enough. So thanks for joining us today as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Simon. And the same goes for you guys in Second Swing. You guys are best in the business. Thanks a lot. We appreciate it. Thanks, John. Have All a right. Great see day. you, everybody. See you now.